All right, great. Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Rich Showalter, and I'm the senior product consultant here at Live 365. Uh, also joining me today, as you saw, is Gene Savage. He's one of our world-class customer support specialists. So, hey, we're happy to be here to walk you guys through how liquid soap works for us and also for our users. So on our agenda today, uh, while we won't be discussing the technical piece associated with liquid soap, we will definitely be giving you an overview of not only the use cases here at Live 365, but also a demo of our broadcaster dashboard and some of the things that, you know, the integration of Liquid Soap allows our users to do. Uh, we'll also give you a brief history of Live 365, uh, along with explaining some of the features that we provide. And following our presentation, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. So let's jump into the history of Live 365, uh, talking about a rich history of over 20 plus years as a content delivery network, allowing anyone to start a licensed internet radio station. Uh, going live in 1999, the service really grew rapidly uh, and at its peak served 50,000 plus stations using proprietary software called Nanocaster. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Live 365 did go bankrupt in 2016, but relaunched in 2017 on Liquid Soap uh, when it was acquired by our parent company, Media Creek. So now, just a few years later, uh, we continue to grow rapidly with 4,000 stations, and uh, we're streaming great curated content with uh, 22 main genres and 238 subgenres of talk and music. Uh, here at Live 365, we provide some great features and benefits when you are streaming with us. Uh, you have the ability to take your station live uh, using third-party automation playout software. Um, you can relay to us directly, you know, using a streaming URL or our feature-rich auto DJ in the cloud, uh, where you guys could, all you need is just an internet connection and a compatible browser to manage your station. Uh, we also work with some great partners to distribute all your content, and one of which you probably already know, iHeartRadio, uh, which is available on our newer broadcast four and five packages uh, that also include uh, additional premium features as well. And as part of every standard broadcast package, we also provide music licensing for the United States, Canada, and also the United Kingdom. And also, along with royalty reporting coverage as well. And as you'll soon see in Gene's presentation, you're able to also tap into a variety of analytics. Uh, you can target where your listeners are coming from, how long they're listening, as well as what devices they're listening on. Uh, in addition, we'll also go ahead and we do offer revenue sharing program to help offset the cost of your subscription. So. Guys, we are literally a one-stop shop for anyone wanting to stream content online. Um, as you can see in this slide, some of the integral parts of the overall user experience really rely heavily on, on this integration, which includes you know, uploading music content, uh, the ability to create professional radio clock wheels, uh, as well as creating and scheduling playlists. And these are just a few of the great benefits of, of us using Liquid Soap. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's show you some of these uh, user benefits. Uh, right after the presentation, uh, we'll go ahead and be happy to take and answer any questions that you guys might have. So Gene, the floor is all yours, my friend. And thank you so much, Rich. I do appreciate that. I want to take about the next 15 minutes or so and show you how we interface with Liquid Soap. We make it easy to get there through the subdomain dashboard.live365.com. What you're seeing here, this is the customer-facing dashboard that broadcasters see when they log in. And it's where they can manage their parameters for Liquid Soap. We'll start at the top of the Live 365 dashboard after the overview, which we're looking at right now. Uh, under media, if we go to the tracks link, you'll see here broadcasters can add and manage their audio files. When they add tracks, they can specify if it's music or talk, 
uh, IDs, promos, and uh, even multi-track files, which can contain multiple timed metadata elements. So that's a new fe feature that we've just added in the last 30 days or so. It really was our most requested feature. It's perfect for DJ mixes or syndicated shows. When you add a file or if you are opening up a file, you're going to see you can add uh, titles, uh, artists, albums, years. There's even album art that you can add to the right. Uh, you can change the file types. You can add categories here and set a file, for that matter, to not be available. Uh, let's say, for example, if it's a Christmas song and we're in the middle of July. <laughs> you can also set up the categories if you click the link below tracks, which you'll see here. Now we'll start in the middle of the schedule section with clock wheels. Once you have your songs in categories, uh, you can create a clock wheel which will pick songs from categories in the order you want. So that includes not only which category it picks from, but you see that if we add a clock wheel entry, uh, we can choose, looking at the algorithm here, uh, you can actually choose which part of the category list it's pulling from, whether that's a, a random track from the category, uh, the oldest track, the oldest album or artist, or even the most recent album or artist, let's say if you're, you're doing a feature of two in a row, for example. Uh, while you can select a category in the drop down above, uh, you don't even have to pull from specific categories. You can set it to pull generically from all music files, or all IDs, or another general classification. Moving down to playlists, you'll see that, well, playlists are exactly what they sound like. Uh, they are a, uh, a list of files selected by you, and you can then schedule that playlist uh, for a specific time, which we'll discuss here in a moment when we get to events. Or you can even set a playlist to be your default playback source under Auto DJ. More on that coming up, too. You can press the shuffle button at the top here uh, to randomize the list of files and prevent the same songs from playing in the same order each time the playlist airs. A nice benefit of our system is that it'll let you know if you're at risk of violating DMCA copyright rules by scheduling uh, too many songs by the same artist too close together, for example. I'm moving back up to events. When you click create event, uh, you have a number of parameters that you can adjust to get the results that you're looking for. When it starts, uh, how long that it runs, whether you're going to play, for example, from a playlist or start a clock wheel or a multitrack file, you can set it to start at the end of the song playing at your scheduled time or immediately at the time you choose, interrupting whatever's on the air. The files can play sequentially or they can crossfade, and we'll discuss that in a moment too. And you can decide if the event should run weekly, daily, or somewhere in between, and for how long that it should repeat. Now, Auto DJ really is the heart of what we do here with Liquid Soap. If you go under Sources, you see here under Global, you can toggle the player on or off. Under Advertisements, toggle the, uh, toggle the advertisements on or off, as well as specify the length of your ad breaks between 30 and 120 seconds each. By going to Track Mix, you can choose your source for Auto DJ, Clock Wheels, or Random. And on this same page, set up rules uh, for track selection, such as Artist, Album, title or track repetition, and that's anywhere from 45 minutes to 240 minutes of protection. You can also, on the crossfade tab, uh, determine if your songs will overlap the fade in and fade out times of your crossfade, how long the crossfade should be, and even the shape of the crossfades. Now, the Live DJ page gives you the settings you need as a broadcaster to point your encoder to us. Anytime you go live, Liquid Soap will override the Auto DJ stream. And when you disconnect, it'll flip the audio back to the Auto DJ content, which Liquid Soap is always running in the background. It's a real advantage because if you're broadcasting live and you lose your connection, it'll flip back over to your cloud library and you never drop a listener. 
looking at the relay page down here below it, uh, you can put a link to your pre-existing stream and we can relay it for you on our servers. I'm moving to the analytics section. You'll see your live statistics are always available with a raw look at the current connections to your stream. IP addresses are encrypted to protect the privacy of the listeners. Under historical stats, you can get a feel for how your station is truly performing over time. The historical stats are filtered, so you don't have to pay for bots, for example, being connected to you. Uh, you can also see your listenership by country or you can see it by platform here. The advertising link lets you see exactly how many ads have been listened to by your listeners. In other words, how much money you're making. We do share revenue with our broadcasters. Moving on down to the listen page, it gives you more than you might expect. It has the code for an HTML5 player you can embed on your website. This will not only let your stream be played on your page without leaving your site, but also display album art and uh, oftentimes links to iTunes so that listeners can click and buy what they hear on your station with ease. This player is customizable for light or dark themes, and you'll see also that it does come in four sizes, going any way from this small all the way up. We can crank this up to an extra large feature here. Uh, below the player, is the code for the recently played list. Uh, this is also embeddable, also customizable. Many of the features uh, that I just mentioned on your player, if you like, it'll show the listener the last five songs that you've played on your stream. And finally, we have here at the bottom a link to your station's landing page, which is what you'll most often want to hand out to potential listeners, and a raw link to the, your live 365 feed that's compatible with many directories if you choose to pay for licensing your streams outside live 365. The station profile page under station settings is where you can really pretty up your landing page. Here you enter your station name, uh, you can upload your logo and your background art for your landing page. You can tag your music genres so listeners can find you and link to your social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so that your listeners can interact with you. The restrictions page gives you fine-grained control over uh, just exactly who can listen to you where and how long. While we automatically geo-block countries where we don't have a licensing agreement yet, we do allow broadcasters to block the United States or Canada or the UK should they choose to do so. Now, this is a way some broadcasters choose to control their streaming costs. Uh, they limit the available audience to reduce royalty responsibilities. Next to geo-blocking is IP bans. Broadcasters can choose to block individual users by IP address. Although we automatically filter bots from your historical stats, some broadcasters like the added flexibility to filter potential new bots that they see connected for long periods of time or listeners they feel are simply hogging their stream bandwidth. Now, finally, under session duration, here to the right, you can limit all listeners' session lengths from 24 to 2 hours. Uh, this can also help control station expenses, providing something similar to Netflix's are you still there? Message. Finally here, the users tab is uh, simply who owns the page. That of course is you. Down the road, you'll be able to add other DJs, providing them with limited access to your account so they can get in and stream live without doing damage to other parts of your station. All of these tools together allow our thousands of broadcasters to harness the power of liquid soap for their station without ever having to learn any programming code. We are so thankful to be able to provide Liquid Soap's benefits rather, to Live 365's customers, both big and small. I do thank you. Hey, thank you, Gene. Thank, thank hey, you very Andrew. much. So, uh, are you taking yeah. it back to Rich? OK, great. Yeah, yeah, just a, just a couple other things. I want to thank Gene. Great job. Uh, so there you got it, folks. Uh, you can see how we depend on this uh, powerful and flexible language here at Live 365, just like Gene was talking about. So um, let's see if we have any questions or comments that we can address. Uh, it looks like we have been addressing some of those within the, uh, the chat itself. 
but if you have any additional questions, let us know. I know we're coming up on time. Um, I want to go ahead and thank uh, uh, Romaine and Samuel for hosting today. Uh, we do appreciate uh, everyone joining us. If you have any questions regarding our platform or you're interested in starting your own station, uh, please feel free to reach out at any time. Uh, you can simply send an email to sales at live365.com. Or if you have any questions or comments regarding the dashboard or any of the technical aspects that we've been talking about today, contact our support team at help at live365. But either way, uh, we're more than happy to help in any way that we can. And when you get a chance, uh, go ahead and, you know, when the seminar is over, when all this is over, go ahead and visit our website at live365.com. Check out some of the thousands of stations that we have on the platform. Uh, there's going to be something there for everyone. So on behalf of myself, Gene, and everyone at Live 365, I want to thank you guys again for joining, and everybody have a fantastic day.